In the second part of the screencast, we're gonna look at the how to make things animate while the user scrolls down the page. And um, all the magic happens because of the JavaScript library we're gonna use, and it's a scroller JS. So you can find scroller just by Googling and um, it sits on GitHub. So you just download the files and uh, include the, the JavaScript library. We're gonna include it in uh, in our code pen as well. So let's go to JS section, paste the reference to the scroller lab library, and I'll also include jQuery because I'll need it later on. But it would work fine even without it for now. So, but let's go ahead with this setup. And um, when we preview the files now, you can see still the same same tree no animation is happening because we need to initiate the uh, scroller first and it's uh, i'm just gonna copy and paste the script and you can find it in the uh, scroller documentation but creates an object and uh, initiates a scroller on it i'm also gonna include the render function because we'll add another div just at the top of the page which will help us uh, calculate the right offset and uh, will help us uh, a lot when we will work out the right timing so at the top of the page we're just gonna include a new div uh, id info and we're gonna render the current page offset uh, inside of it okay and uh, I'm gonna style it as well so under our section or at the top we're just gonna uh, style it a little bit and um, we're gonna position it fixed so our info will be position fixed top 20 left 20 pixels I'm gonna give it some background color so we can see it. RGBA and it's gonna be black 0.50% transparent and the color will be white and we'll give it some nice padding 20 pixels and the Z index 999 just to make sure it always sits at the top. And uh, so what is this uh, div doing? It's, it's helping us working out when to turn things on and off and when to change the properties of uh, the animations. So uh, it's, it's a helper. When the site goes live, we'll remove this or we comment this out. And uh, But it's a good way to uh, work out your timings. So now we've got this uh, div rendering the top offset. So we can work out when we want certain elements disappear or change in size and uh, or color. So first thing we're gonna animate is the get scrolling indicator. So we'll hide the tree for now, and uh, we'll set we'll set uh, the data attributes to the scroll baby. So how scroller works, you add data attributes and uh, change the CSS properties of each of the elements. Scroller then works out when and uh, which of the CSS uh, properties to animate. Let's start first with uh, data uh, top. Data top. We're gonna animate the transform translate y to zero when the section is at the top of the viewport to the translate value to be zero and when it's little bit down which is uh, let's say minus 875 pixels off we want to change the value of the y translate to be 300 pixels once we scroll 800 pixels down the page we're gonna move that get scrolling out of the view but at the moment this is being triggered based on the position of this element but we want to start moving off the screen straight away when you start scrolling down the page. So 
at the moment as you can see it's been triggered around 300 pixels uh, down we want to animate it straight away so we need to set the data anchor target to be a slide one now when we preview it you'll see it starts moving straight away okay so that's how you set the different anchor tag now we're gonna finally start animating the tree itself and um, I'm just gonna quickly hide all the elements and just leave the div uh, ID tree in here and I'm gonna copy and paste the elements one by one just to make sure it's not it doesn't get it too much too messy with uh, all the comments so first thing we got to animate when we getting rid of the uh, scrolling we want to animate the pot into the view we're gonna animate the pot item we're gonna set the opacity to zero when it's when the section is at the top because we want it to be invisible and um, we're gonna set the translate to minus 800 pixels which means that the pot is sitting out of the uh, monitor somewhere at the top 800 pixels up and when we scroll down 875 pixels we'll change the opacity to one and uh, we'll bounce the uh, the pot into 200 pixels uh, offset and then we'll bounce it again uh, at a 1500 uh, scroll position you can see it in action now when I scroll down the page you see how it sort of fades fades slightly in and then bounces from 0 to 200 and uh, back up these values and uh, CSS obviously works for bouncing pot but you need to change it for for your own project with setting the target anchor to slide one so it's triggered at the same time as the animation of the scroll scroll baby next up is the animation of the tree itself of the first part copy and paste the code snippet and the data attributes for the part one it sets the top opacity to zero and then keeps it zero until we hit the 1600 pixels from the top and uh, that's when it also scales down to 0 0.5 and the bottom offset is 75 pixels and then in about 4000 pixels uh, scrolling it changes the opacity to 1 and, uh, and the bottom offset um, to 90 pixels so when, when we look at it now we'll see that the, ball, uh, the pot bounces and then roughly around, not roughly but exactly at 1600 pixels starts animating uh, the opacity and the bottom offset and then later on from 2000 pixels to 4000 pixels changes the opacity uh, sorry the scale to 1 and the bottom offset to 4 to 6 which is the initial uh, position okay so now we need to start animating the trunk roughly around the 2000 mark we want now to the trunk to become visible and uh, growing with the tree I'm just gonna quickly paste it in same thing we making it invisible at the top keeping it invisible until 1600 pixels scaling it down uh, this time we scaling down both X and Y value so we're distorting it a little bit and uh, because it looks more natural and so when we preview it you'll see the trunk growing from small to big one the next thing we'll animate will be the part two so when the gap between the trunk and the first part is, is big enough we're gonna scale up and animate the uh, part two so let's copy and paste part two's data attributes And when we preview it again you'll see that the part 2 starts fading in and animating just when that first part gap is uh, big enough we're transforming scale bottom offset and uh, having the target 
anger slide one same thing appears for part three part four so let's quickly uh, copy in the data attributes for part three and also part four when there is enough gap for the next image to appear then we'll animating it in so it took me a while to work it out and there is not really a guide for that i guess you need to play experiment with it and um, i guess have some fun with it as well but i, I like that um, elastic effect in the initial animation was actually just scaling the whole tree up and uh, that looked quite natural unnatural obviously tree doesn't grow that way so uh, i think this one looks looks much better now, the last thing we're gonna add is a, a shadow we want the shadow to grow with the tree itself so when the tree gets a bigger uh, size we want to grow that uh, tree as uh, the shadow as well and we're gonna paste it in as the last uh, last thing and uh, 3000 pixels we're changing the opacity to slightly uh, visible and the scale 0 0.6 and then we animating it to the full size and full opacity uh, at 4000 pixels so as you can see all the final animations finish at 4000 pixels so we scroll down the page and 4000 pixels of the page of the top we've got the animation finished so there you have it it's a scrolling animation triggered by scroller.js uh, nice christmas tree growing out of the pot of a bouncing pot so hopefully you've enjoyed the, the tutorial the demo and uh, you can head down to codepen and see these demo files see the scroller that attributes play with them and uh, see how the settings affect the final animation and if you've got any other questions regarding merry christmas Lux or your scroller js project please leave a comment under the video or go to my blog and uh, leave a comment uh, there i'm always replying to to emails uh, and to messages in person so uh, please leave a comment and um, let me know what you think about my first screencast and I'll see you next time. Cheers. Bye.